Welcome to Unit 4, Lesson 5, Impact of Water Shortage. For this particular unit, if you are watching it in class, uh, please get the teacher to pause it at the appropriate points so that you can copy the information. For this particular slide, please write down Unit 4, Lesson 5, Impact of Water Shortage and today's date. When you are done, please look up so the teacher can continue. Now for this particular part, the thinking question is what are problems that are associated with water shortage? Now as we go through the contents of this portion, keep this question at the back of your mind. As you go through the rest of the week, look at how we live our lives and the ways that we use water and how would your life be turned upside down if there was severe water shortage in daily life now in Singapore? So nothing to copy on this slide. There's no logo. So let's move on. All right, lesson objectives. Uh, just a gentle reminder, whenever you see that red logo on the slide itself, it means that this particular slide needs to be recorded down in your notebooks. So lesson objectives for this lesson, uh, we will be looking at how we describe problems that water shortage brings. So if you are still copying, um, the teacher may pause the video now and resume when you are ready. Water shortage is a very serious problem, however being in Singapore now and uh, bringing back what we learned in the earlier parts, Singapore is a country that is water secure. We, are, we have our renewable sources of water and we are no, not at risk of uh, having water shortage at all. But we have to note that water being the most essential resource for humans uh, survival on earth is very important to us. And so when you have water shortage, the impact is often a very serious one. We humans cannot survive without water. Um, if you were to not drink water for a couple of days, you would fall into a state of shock. Your body will not respond. And so that's very important. Now, one solution that mankind has come up with all over the world when faced with irregular water supply is to conduct water rationing. Okay, this process is uh, conducted all across the world, but very prevalent in Asia where we live. However, in Singapore, we have not had water uh, rationing for a good 15 years, not enforced water rationing. So once again, if you're copying, uh, teacher may pause the video now and resume when the rest of you are ready. Now domestically, when we talk about domestic impact of uh, water shortage here, uh, you need to look at the fact that we have 1.1 billion people globally who do not have access to safe drinking water. Okay, this is uh, this means that they not only have to maybe go to the village uh, tap, communal tap, uh, the water that they obtain from the communal tap might not be safe for consumption. So always bear in mind that uh, although in Singapore we have water security and we have safe potable water piped into our homes, into our schools, uh, water that is ready to drink straight from the tap. Uh, we are an anomaly in the world. We are not common in countries in the world and highly uncommon in countries in Southeast Asia as well. Now in LDCs or less developed countries, uh, the percentile is very high. One in five people do not have access to safe water, which means that the majority, 80% of people in less developed countries um, have find it uh, very difficult to gain access to water that is safe to drink, that is not polluted, that is uh, portable. Now one of these key reasons for uh, water shortage is agricultural use. Um, when a lot of the fresh water from the rivers and streams are directed into the fields for agricultural purposes, a lot of it is lost uh, and as a result domestic users don't have access to this. This is made worse whenever you have uh, climate change and nowadays with all the in, in longer drought periods, um, you create a large shortage for water, both domestically as well as for agricultural use. 
political impact uh, when you have water resources that are shared uh, you can have conflicts over the water supply when many many countries actually share that particular water resource so one example that you will be reading later is uh, on the Mekong River which is a very very long river that starts in China, parts of China and it stretches across a lot of the countries in uh, Southeast Asia like uh, Vietnam, Myanmar, Burr, uh, Thailand and so on and Cambodia so when you construct a dam upstream what happens is the total water supply downstream or further down the, the river is decreased because a dam actually reduces that now there are many different impacts of that uh, both on ecology as well as on human life uh, if you not if we even if we don't think about consumption of the water itself you think about livelihoods of fishermen of industries who use the water as a as a main water source all the people downstream are very badly affected because of this dam conduct construction further upstream however for the countries who are upstream or who are sharing these resources creating a dam often has many um, benefits for themselves because they are able to regulate flooding they are able to build hydroelectric power plants and have a clean cheap source of electricity so when you have an increased demands upstream for different ways to use the water body uh, you could run into cases where countries get into arguments with one another they take one another to court and uh, enforce legal action or worse still you could fight a, a war because of the resource okay. fortunately we have not seen a war over water yet globally but uh, it's not to say that it will never happen so uh, once again if you're still copying the teacher may pause at this point and continue when you are done now in terms of economic impact we are looking at things like reduced agricultural use due to a drop in water supply. Now, when you don't have enough water to supply into your agricultural fields, your plantations, your plants will die. Plants like us need water to survive. As a result of the crop failure, you're producing less food and that could have a direct impact on your human population. They could starve and you could end up having a lot of uh, conflict over food reduction. Industries also use a lot of water, so as a direct result of uh, reduced water, you could have increased industrial costs. Now, fresh water is very important to industries, not because they bottle it up and sell it as a soft drink, but in all industries, water, fresh water is used as a cooling agent commonly for machines. And you have to understand that machines in industries run uh, for very long hours and very high heat so they need to be cooled down or the machine will break down so the most common way to cool the machines down is to run fresh water across your machines that in effect helps the cooling process and when you don't have enough water uh, industries are affected by this so water price increase could lead to uh, uh, increase in the price of products because now the factories decide to pay more for water than you use for cooling to produce the products and the factory is not going to absorb the increase in cost the increase in cost will be passed on to the consumer which is you and I so once again uh, teacher may pause at this moment for students who may still be copying and resume once they are done okay before we take a look at the case study uh, summary for this you don't have to take this now but in your mind Take note, are you now able to describe some of the problems that water shortage brings? This is a very short part because the bulk of it is actually in the case study that we're going to study shortly. Okay, so the summary to the unit summary question is, can you now describe the problems that water shortage actually brings? Okay, as part of your stimulus response question training in lower sec geography now, uh, we're going to take a look at one article one article uh, that the teacher will be giving out now. Take some time, read through the article. It is uh, three and a half pages long. It is about the sharing of the water along the Mekong Delta and some of the conflicts that uh, these countries are going through as a result of this. Okay, uh, you have about ten minutes to five to ten minutes to read through the entire article. After which, uh, we will be continuing with the final item, which is the summative summary exercise okay now together with the reading the teacher will be giving you the summary exercise for this particular lesson 
So after you're done reading the rest of the time, uh, you can look through your notes, you can refer to the readout, to, to the handout, with the case study reading on the Mekong River uh, to complete your summary exercise. Now this summary exercise should not take you more than 10 minutes to do, so get it done and submit it back to the teacher. Very important things to note, please include your name, your class, and today's date when you are filling in the summary exercise. That will be all for today. This particular lesson will be uploaded on the YouTube channel by the end of Term 3, Week 6. So for those of you who are not in class or those of you who will want to revise this particular lesson, check the YouTube channel and enjoy the video once again at home. Thank you.